2021 is officially over and we got to see a lot of announcements coming out from the likes of Microsoft and Nintendo. In this video, however, we're going to be focusing solely on Xbox and Bethesda's E3 2021 presentation that happened last Sunday. There's a lot of points I jotted down here that I saw at the presentation and a lot of things definitely piqued my interest and I was very happy to see what's in store for Xbox and Bethesda going forward into 2021 and also into 2022 and beyond. So let's kick things off with the teaser trailer of Starfield that kicked off the presentation. It was a teaser trailer of what looked like an astronaut that was going through their uh, cockpit, cabin, whatever you want to call it, and they were heading off to a planet. And we got a release date of 11, 11, 22. So November 11, 2022 is when this game will come off. And it was confirmed it will be a day one game Game Pass release exclusive to the Xbox series consoles and also on Game Pass for PC. The next part of the showcase was showing off Game Pass and the Game Pass offerings that are going to be coming into 2021 and beyond. Turtle Rock Studios, we know them as the creators behind the Left 4 Dead franchise, Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, are back with their spiritual successor called Back for Blood. This game is a four player co-op zombie shooter that is in the same realm as the Left 4 Dead games except it's not called Left 4 Dead 3 of course because Valve still owns the rights to that. At IP. The game is going to be releasing on October 12th in 2021, and it is also coming day one to Game Pass, which is huge, huge for somebody like me that is a big fan of the Left 4 Dead games. And I was already anticipating buying this game day one, spending money on it uh, for the Xbox or for PlayStation, PC, whatever I was going to play it on, I was going to buy it. But now that I see it's coming to Game Pass, I am so stoked to download this on my laptop and to download this onto my Series X and play with my friends. Friends. Next, we got shown off a hefty trailer along with gameplay for Stalker 2, which is releasing on April 28th, 2022. It is a timed exclusive for Xbox, and it'll also be releasing on Game Pass Day 1. Now, I never played Stalker 1. I never even heard of the game up until I saw last year the teaser trailer for this game, and it reminds me a lot of a darker, spookier version of like the Metro games. That's all I can really say on it, but I am eager to find out more because the shooting mechanics the style the the gameplay all looks really good and i just want to see what's to come with this we saw a new indie game coming to game pass as well dame one it is made by the team behind limbo and inside if you remember those games called 12 minutes it looks like it's going to be some type of mystery thriller type of indie game involving a couple getting into a kind of a sticky situation involving the cops. That's all I could really say on it, but I am eager to find out more as well. The Yakuza series also made an appearance at the Xbox presentation, and Sega revealed that all of the Yakuza games, starting from the prequels all the way on to the latest release, Like a Dragon, are all going to be on Game Pass starting today. So if you haven't played any of the Yakuza games, or if you were interested in Yakuza Like a Dragon, you can go ahead now and try them on Game Pass if you have a subscription already. Lastly on this part, Bethesda also announced that a ton of their games would be coming to Game Pass. So the Fallout series, some Elder Scrolls games, the Wolfenstein, the Evil Within, Prey, Rage and Rage 2, etc. All those games are coming to Game Pass. If they're not on there already, you'll be able to play them all eventually. Sea of Thieves had a pretty lengthy segment where they covered their new single player story expansion involving the Pirates of the Caribbean, and it includes Jack Sparrow as one of the main protagonists. Psychonauts 2, the sequel to the original Xbox fan favorite Psychonauts, is coming out on August 25th of this year, also coming to Game Pass. A new IP also by the name of Redfall, which looks like it is a four-person co-op vampire shooter, which was shown a teaser at the end of the conference, is coming next year to Xbox. The Outer Worlds 2 also got announced and it's going to be exclusive to all Xbox platforms coming next year. Halo Infinite. Halo, Halo, Halo Infinite got a pretty lengthy showing here at the presentation and we got to see a lot of the multiplayer this time and what 343 Industries was working on. The game looks tight, it looks more fast paced, they now have introduced a grappling hook which is going to be able to get you across the map a lot quicker as well as grab certain weapons and items that are within the map or also get closer to an enemy in order to kill them. The multiplayer of Halo 
Halo Infinite is going to be free to play for everyone, so you don't need Xbox Live Gold in order to play it, and you don't need an Xbox console to play it because it's also coming to PC. The single player was also shown again. This time we got a short um, CGI part of the game, I believe. It's not, I don't believe it's actual gameplay footage, or it might have been, but it didn't really show, like in the last presentation, how we would be seeing the game if we were playing it. But it does look a lot better than what we were shown last year. This looks like a legitimate next-gen Halo game in terms of the campaign. We got a look at the AI in the game that is replacing Cortana, I should say. And Halo Infinite just got a release window of holiday 2021 instead of a release date, which was a little bit surprising given that you know we're not too far off from what would be considered the holiday window and we still don't have a release date. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Forza Horizon 5 would be the last game shown off at this presentation. And oh man, does it look really good. It takes place in Mexico. It is a stunning looking and visually impressive game. It's going to look really good on anyone's PC or on any of the Xbox systems. A couple of things to note that there is a new Battle Royale race mode within this game. Along with just the usual type of modes that you're used to. And most notably that nice open world just drive around and just doing whatever you want it's releasing in november of 2021 there also is going to be featured a track builder there are aztec mountains and volcanic canyons that you'll be driving around through so this all just looks really good i'm a big fan of the forza horizon games ever since the first one and forza horizon 4 i felt was a really good game it was probably the best in the series that we've gotten and this one's looking like it's going to up that as well now i did have a few concerns nothing completely major but there were just some things i did want to point out so again no release date still yet for halo infinite other than holiday 2021 now i highly doubt that this game is going to get delayed again because to be honest i don't think microsoft nor 343 industries can afford to delay the halo game any further what was shown last year and it not launching with the system was pretty bad but they could really make up ground with what they just shown here which is a great showing by releasing it this year especially this year of all years being the 20th anniversary of halo so i think it's important that they stick their guns to releasing this year but we definitely need a release date at, at some point. I understand that the holiday is going to be looking quite crowded and I would have thought that this Halo Infinite game would have gotten a November release date but now that November window is being taken up by Forza, I guess this game could potentially come out either in October or September. I mean, worst comes to worst, maybe a early December game but I highly doubt it. I think if anything, we might be looking at a September or an October date. There was no mention of the Perfect Dark game that we got shown off last year and there was no Persona 5 on Game Pass which was quite disappointing but it's all good. We got tons and tons of stuff shown off that just make me as an Xbox fan happy as well as other Xbox fans happy. So overall I think Microsoft not only had a really good showing and not only a strong showing but this was by far i believe their best e3 presentation that they've ever had since they came into the gaming industry and the future is bright for xbox as we've been saying for a while and it continues to be that way the future of xbox looks really good the argument that xbox has no games is finally dying out because they just showed off a lot of exclusives and they just showed off a lot of game pass entries you know for that pricing point of just 10 to 15 dollars depending on which one you get i'm um, just getting access to all those games is nothing short but really amazing and a lot of value for gamers so overall i give xbox and bethesda's e3 presentation an a minus and that's all i gotta say let me know what you guys think of xbox's presentation did you like it did you not like it leave a comment like this video and subscribe for more this is Thess. stay safe and god bless